Hello, dear ones. We've been looking forward to this time with you. You're at home with Jim and with Joy. You're a part of the EWTN family. You're safe, you're secure. Only great stuff here, a great Lord. So we're gathering together. You're a part of the family. And we wanted to announce a few very important events that are taking place uh, in our country. The International Week of Prayer and Fasting, September 20th through the 28th in Washington, D.C. The website is iwopf.org. That's iwopf.org. And also, starting September 24th, I guess it's this Wednesday, the great 40 Days for Life campaign. Special time, sanctified, set apart for Christians to gather together in prayer mm -hmm. and in fasting as well. Constant vigil out at abortion mills. And then EW10 is hosting a holy hour, a holy hour of reparation for the Black Mass that's taking place. That reparation time will take place this Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So you want to tune in to EWTN uh, TV and watch that. I'm sure that might be carried as well on radio. <clears throat> Remember, you are an important part of this family, and we want to hear from you. You can call us at 205-271-2980 or toll-free, 1-800-221-2980. Nine four six zero. Mama always likes to hear from her children, and we want to hear from you. Not that you're our children, but it's nice to hear from the family members. You can also email us anytime, Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. We do read, try to answer as best we can your emails. You can tweet us. We want tweets uh, at EWTN hashtag Jim and Joy. So please, you're an important part of the family. Joy, thinking about what's happening throughout our country, the International Week of Prayer and Fasting, 40 Days for Life, the Service of Reparation, uh, just the importance mm. of, of prayer and of fasting and of Christian action. And, I, and we do want to mention that with 40 Days for Life, as well as that, that week of prayer and fasting, and we hope that you'll mark those on your calendar. It's important, maybe you want to have a piece of paper with you or your calendar there. Even if you don't get on computers, you can mark the 20th through the 28th is that special week of prayer and fasting uh, and so that you can be a part of that. Even if you can't register online, you can be a part of that. And then 40 days for life on the 24th, 40 days. Write it on your calendar because you can participate right where you are. Joy? And it's so important because you know, you might not be computer savvy and you might not have a computer in your home you might be in a nursing home and but you want to be a part of all of the wonderful things that we're going to be bringing to you that you could participate in so we really want to encourage you when the show starts to sit down and say i need to write that down so i have pen and paper in hand um, so you can participate because maybe you won't be able to get to washington dc or you won't be able to get to a 40 days for life site at planned parenthood but you could pray at home and mm -hmm. you could pray mm -hmm. in your bed and you could uh, can incorporate it in, in your daily rosary yeah. and in yeah. your prayer life. And, and for those of you that are computer savvy, then you need to, you've got the websites and we did go yesterday to sign up to the website yes. for the week of prayer and fasting. So you can be involved, whether you go to Washington DC, I encourage you to do that, or you just sign up. So what am I signing up for? And so we just made a commitment. They give you various ways to pray, whether it's the rosary or chaplain of divine mercy, or just any way you want to do that. Uh, but we said we make a pledge from the 20th through the 28th to be about specific prayer, bullet prayer, right. not just general prayer. And to do this with thousands of people throughout mm -hmm. the world, praying for what? Mm -hmm. Praying for the nations of the world and all people and that includes us, right. to be converted, right. for the spirit of conversion to come upon the world and the mm -hmm. church and the nations. I want to be about that. Right. So we signed up and said, we're on board, the 20th through the 28th, and to fast. And you can fast in a variety of ways. Think of the season of Lent and the Lenten fast. Sometimes you just eat one full meal and two smaller ones that are, might equal, might not equal the other one. You can abstain from TV or whatever it might be. But I think it was John Paul II, St. John Paul II, who said, uh, these are effective means, what? Prayer and fasting to combat the devil and evil, and they will prevail. So prayer 
and fasting are critical and even 40 days for life incorporates prayer, right. fasting, vigil on site and so on. The spiritual disciplines are so important, not in and of themselves, but that they bring us before the Lord and we unite our sacrifices with the sacrifice of Christ and we can change the world. And God you, can change the and world. you, and I, and, and the, our listening audience, you want to be a part of the solution. You know, you want to be a part of saying, I got on my knees and I cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, please, because if it, the word of the Lord tells us, if we would humble ourselves yeah. and seek the Lord's face, he will heal yeah. our land. But we got to be a part about doing that. Yeah. I know that you and I, we were involved in, in so many aspects of the pro-life movement. Um, and then in 2004, in Texas, uh, 40 Days for Life was birthed. Yeah. And then it went nationwide in 2007, and we brought it here to Birmingham. Well, we went and it got me back out on the sidewalks. I used to love sidewalk counseling. Mm -hmm. And um, for whatever reason, fell away and got involved in another pro-life aspect. Start, I think I started teaching the na an abstinence-based program in schools. But we got back out there because we need to, we need to physically take our bodies, if we are able, yeah. to the killing centers right. and to say, that I, I, I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray and I'm right. going to be a witness for you, Lord, because yeah. I want to be a part of, so, of the solution yeah. to stop this culture of death that is wreaking havoc on women and babies. Yeah. So 40 days for life, the week of prayer, we're going to be praying all next week and those 40 days. Why don't you join Jim and Joy and thousands of people throughout the world. Mark it on your calendar, the 20, 20 through the 28th, when you get with your family. You get with your prayer group, whatever it might be. They might not be aware of it, but you can always say, hey, do you know that this week is the week of fasting and right. prayer? For what? For the building of a new culture of life, for the conversion of all people in our nation. Praying for peace. There's just something about doing that together. Right. And we feel so lonely and we feel so small and, and in this. And you feel like your prayers don't matter. You feel it's just me, but the word of God tells us is that where two or more are gathered in his name. And so we want to be a part of that great solution to make all of that happen. All right. Well, we're going to take a break at this point. We have a great guest uh, coming up in Kathleen uh, Eaton Bravo, and she's taken the pro-life movement to new levels with birth choice health clinics. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. We'll see you in our living room. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, today, all the way from California, we have beautiful Kathleen Eaton Bravo, who is the CEO and founder of Birth Choice Health Clinics. Kathleen, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Thank you. Well, Glad to be here. Well, it's so wonderful to have you. Now, tell us all about your ministry. Well, it found, I founded it um, 34 years ago, uh, 35 years ago. I walked out the back door of an abortion clinic and left my son behind, cradle Catholic, left the church, went to college, found myself in a crisis pregnancy and um, went to get help or find out what services. I walked into a Planned Parenthood mm. and walked out uh, and left my son behind, sat on the curb. Um, just started praying and uh, came back to the church with a vengeance and founded, uh, actually started volunteering in a crisis pregnancy center and then um, opened Birth Choice Health Clinics mm -hmm. as a pregnancy center first, wow. pregnancy center. Converted that to health clinics, uh, started the conversion in 2007 into 2008. And um, so that's the history of our medical clinic. We went full medical and um, we offer uh, not just pregnancy tests and ultrasound, but STD testing and treatment. Mm -hmm. It's sort of our youth upstream program to get to the root cause of our youth today and those that have embraced, most of them, the hookup mentality because mm -hmm. of the media mm -hmm. and Planned Parenthood's hookup this weekend, this week texts that right. go out to our kids. And um, so we do STD testing and treatment so we can get them in and test them and then bring them back to abstinence and try to stop the slippery slope. We do well woman care, 
so that we can do the, their yearly exams and do HPV testing, the fastest growing and largest sexually transmitted disease, killing our children. And then we do prenatal care as well, cancer screening. So actually what we do is whatever Planned Parenthood does, we do minus contraception and abortion. They just, Planned Parenthood just became our primary care provider under the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. Obamacare. And so now we've also taken on a collaboration with primary care faith-based clinics. So now we're offering primary care mm -hmm. as well. And don't, don't you see that since you've started 34 years ago, the whole pregnancy care center, I mean, that whole movement has evolved yes. because of the culture of death. Mm -hmm. So it's not just anymore the uh, a young girl who's 16 years old coming in in an unplanned pregnancy and needing uh, some navigation through those waters about how to unload that information to our parents. Yes. So why don't you tell our audience what you're finding and why such a great need for your medical clinics? Well, I think that we've all watched um, the sexual revolution of the 60s, which was my time, Sorry, hard to say, mm -hmm. um, evolve into this hookup mentality that is being just pushed on our children through the media, social media, Hollywood, Planned Parenthood, and oftentimes the, um, the governments in the states, I happen to be in California. Uh, for example, in California, we have, uh, we do 40, we are at a 40% higher rate of abortion in California than any other state. Mm -hmm. We have 672 abortion providers. The closest to that is 299 in New York. Um, Plan, uh, Planned Parenthood in our state became a primary, 88 Planned Parenthoods became primary care providers and just last month our governor signed in, uh, into law that on the federal, our yearly budget, state budget, he increased um, the funds from the state to go to the abortion providers Planned Parenthood by 40 percent saying that it's preventative care um, and that if we could take care of the problem before these women deliver the babies, then they won't have to fund those children for the next 30 or 40 years. And so um, he increased it by 40% and he decreased care to pregnancy clinics by 10%. Now, we are not government funded. Uh, we are, of course, Catholic. We're ecumenical, actually, faith-based. But that shift, um, the Affordable Care Act has turned pregnancy into what they call uh, moved it into preventative care. Right. That means that they will do anything, especially in those states that have very high abortion rates, Colorado, down the, uh, the West Coast, uh, California, the largest, and then uh, across and then on the East Coast and through the Great Lakes. So if you look at, we call them the flyover states, there's not a lot of Planned Parenthood in those states. They are in those key areas that it's where they make a lot of money. So we had to shift from a pregnancy center to a medical clinic to compete against Planned Parenthood, a billion dollar, hundred million dollar business. So we developed this business model to compete with them nose to nose and we open up these clinics as close as we can to them. And how can we beat them? I don't have a billion dollars. It's to get those young people out of Planned Parenthood and into our medical clinics, offering medical care because on Google and, key, and, and all the social media, what they're looking for is a clinic not a pregnancy center. They know what they want mm -hmm. and they want a clinic and they've stated in, in, re in research that they want a do doctor, a nurse practitioner, a nurse. They want um, services free, but they also want education and help. And they want the truth in love. In love. Mm -hmm. They still want to be loved. Right. And so that's what we're doing. It's, it's a big, godly, audacious goal, but we're seeing somewhere between, well, we've seen almost 75,000 thousand patients in our clinics since we went medical a few years ago and we're we've just are getting close to 6,000 babies saved we've had over 95,000 hits on our website so when we converted to that clinic model it, it immediately showed us with those numbers um, that if you serve those young people you're going to save more babies and that we're offering what they're looking for and guess what those 75,000 young people that came to our clinics over the last few years are young people that would have gone into a Planned Parenthood right. and they're coming to us. So it is working and that's what we continue to do. Now we're actually, with Planned Parenthood becoming a primary care provider under the Affordable Care Act, we've actually merged with faith-based primary care providers. We've moved into the same site and so now I'm a primary care provider because I have the primary care services within our clinics being served by that clinic and then we continue doing ours. So now 
I'm a primary care provider too. So I just follow Planned Parenthood and where they go, mm -hmm. um, of course, then uh, abortion and contraception being our. But you're, mm -hmm. you're really doing the good parts of what Planned Parenthood says they do. Yes. <laughs> okay, you, you don't do the, the evil part of it regarding abortion. Right. But I think they make a lot of claims. I don't know really what they're doing in there besides directing women to abortion or doing it themselves into that place. Um, but you're, so I, I think the unique thing, and I want people to understand, because you talk about you were, when you first started out, you were a pregnancy center, and then you're saying, now we're, we're, we're uh, medical health clinics, and, and the difference again, and I want to clarify that because it seems like, for me, in my understanding, what you're talking about is that when you were a pregnancy center or other centers, crisis pregnancy center, pregnancy centers, the focus is very much on, on pregnancy alone, crisis pregnancy, dealing with them at that point. But your services deal with women and men, maybe family members, even before. Yes. They're in that situation as well as being in that situation, as well as other areas not dealing with abortion. So you're giving tests of the tasks mm -hmm. there. So it's holistic service and healthcare, and this is what you all are doing, and you're encouraging the rest of yes. the pro-life movement to, to get on board. It's true. We, um, if you look at, if you serve the young couple that God's bringing to our doors, you're gonna save the baby at a higher rate because you're loving and respecting them, and they don't love themselves, especially mm -hmm. the young women. But then if you do it broader, especially within the very underserved and poor communities, the families come in. And so that's where you have the primary mm -hmm. care, the social justice side of the church versus the pro-life side. And it used to be them versus us, yeah, but right. we've combined it. And why so many of the bishops, like Archbishop Gomez is on our natural advisory board and Bishop Van, our bishop, is the one that promoted this. Okay. The CCHD, the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, under the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops has funded us 500000 a year for potentially five years, two and a half million, if we do our job. Wow, mm -hmm. so say um, that again, how much? Say that again slowly. 500000 a year the CCHD is giving us for potentially mm -hmm. five years, so two and a half million, as long as we do what we say we're gonna do, right. to fund this social justice pro-life collaborative model yeah. of clinics to serve the poor, but also we look at the women that are out there, they might be wealthy and living in million dollar homes, but spiritually mm -hmm. they're poor because they've embraced this hookup mentality and they're going down that slippery slope yeah. and they're lost. And so are the young men. We see, because of our STD testing, we see many young men. So we're also able to counsel them on you know, what are you doing? And do you know mm -hmm. the outcomes of, of this lifestyle that you're embracing? Yeah. Nobody's doing that or teaching them that. And so that's why our numbers are so high because it is a holistic model. Right. And actually, and that's the model now we are trademarking. We will launch a new company, a new brand. It's a national brand that pregnancy centers now can say, I want to do that. Most pregnancy centers are seeing their numbers dropping by about 80% because of social media, um, Google, uh, you, when you're a pregnancy center, you're not a clinic, these kids are looking for clinics. Right. And so that's restricting them. So to come under, and Planned Parenthood is one brand, it's a big name. Mm -hmm. And we are 1,500 or 1,800 pregnancy centers all working independently mm -hmm. and alone. And this is an opportunity that the church wants to do, both the Catholic and the evangelical churches, Protestant churches, to unify mm -hmm. this movement and to compete with Planned Parenthood at a much yeah. higher level. And Kathleen, why don't you tell our listening audience, because I think some of us are deceived, we don't understand that in the state of California, you don't have restrictions. No. So what does that mean? Well, basically, we don't have restrictions. Where a lot of the states you're seeing, and we celebrate the closing of, of uh, clinics, and you see um, the states restricting. For example, I think uh, Oklahoma is one of the most pro-life states with more laws right. on the books restricting abortion. Of course, we've been following Texas and what's happening there. And in California, we have none of that. Right. I mean, we aren't even recognized. Planned Parenthood is held up as just so the, you, you the don't have you don't have a 24-hour waiting period. No, we you don't do have not. parental consent. No, we you, do you not. 12-year-olds have... can get an abortion right. in California without the parental to consent. To what stage of gestational development? At any stage, for, for any reason. You talk up until nine months. Yes, a 12-year-old can have an abortion in yes. the state of in the state of California. Mm -hmm. There's no restrictions. We have. Um, 
I have to also let you know, we study the Planned Parenthood strategic plan in Washington DC, a group of people that feeds information to us, and one of those men, Chuck Tunnel, is on my board. And we're watching, and Planned Parenthood's strategic plan is they've restructured as we're restructuring. Right. I'm sort of following their model to know exactly where they're going. And um, the sad thing about California, it is in their strategic plan that in 2015 and beyond, they are going to pour funds into California. They've even named cities like Santa Ana and mm. Barstow, and you, you know these are poor areas. Um, primarily Hispanic or African American where they're going to go in yeah. and open up these huge 65,000 square foot abortion, abortion facilities. Uh, San Bernardino is another one in Riverside. So we see it coming. It's it's coming like a freight train. Right. I think the importance is, is to understand and we all know that what goes in California goes across the country. And if we can launch this model that the CCHD in Baltimore is realizing and impact, if I can see 15 to 20,000 uh, patients in my county alone, and we take that throughout the state, um, you wonder why Planned Parenthood hates me. Right. <laughs> they do. Well, let's let's mm -hmm. invite the rest of the family. If you have a question for Kathleen, give us a call now at 205-271-2980, 205-271-2980, or toll free 800-221-6460. Zero. You can speak with her directly, make a question, a comment, share your own story. We're here for you. You're a part of the family. You know, when you started out sharing, I don't want to miss, you were sharing your own personal story mm -hmm. of pregnancy loss. And uh, so this is birthed out of real pain. Yes. Uh, your ministry. What, when the women come in, or guys or whoever, um, you're a health clinic but is it, is it a clinical feel or is it a redemptive feel? I mean, you've kind of, a number of your people have been there and done that and tried that and you know, mm -hmm. created more problems. What, what's the ambiance in your place, if you could share that? Well, actually, it's a place. clinic, and yeah. this is because there's research been done nationally and another research project just took place, and when they ask the youth, what do you want? They want a clinic. They yeah. want to walk in and feel like there's doctors, there's mm -hmm. nurses, we have nurse practitioners, yeah. that the testing and medical care is done by professionals. But they also said, but when all that's done, we want to be able to talk to a nurse and share our fears and what we're dealing with and be very open about um, our sexual health or our sexual promiscuity in many cases. And so we are a clinic. When you walk in, and, and we don't want to make it girly because we want the young men to feel right. welcome as well. So our nurses are in scrubs, our staff are professionally right. dressed, right. our volunteers are professionally dressed. So it is a clinic yeah. and it's, it's beautifully done. And, um, and so we're blessed to have that. But there is that, um, they say, um, the, the, the highest number of referrals come from word of mouth. Right. That is huge. Yeah. Right. And they tell their friends, they did not judge us. They did not, um, we heard that they were Christian and, and Catholic and they were gonna force their religion on us and they were gonna take away our choice. And they go back and say, they didn't take away our choice. They gave us information. We empower them to make a better decision for their life. 81% of the women that come to us that are going to an abortion clinic change their mind that's and incredible. have their child. Right. 81%. Yeah, that's right. very high. So, that's you know, yesterday, being a full service of Pregnancy uh -huh. Medical Center, we had a client and she um, had an adverse diagnosis in the pregnancy. And her little baby was diagnosed with trisomy 18. Mm. And, um, and they wanted to abort. They were like, abort the baby, abort the baby. And she came to us, she trusted us and she loved us. And, and we walked her through that. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we buried the baby. Oh, yes. And, we, it, and that's, that was the love that she received. And we, we helped financially bankroll you know, the mm -hmm. funeral for her too. Because that's what we're about. We're, we're not yes. about uh, making you feel judged and condemned that, that if this is, we wanna do life. And we really encouraged yeah. her, you are this baby's mother for however long you mm -hmm. have her, yeah. you know, in utero or right. if she lives and, and nobody knew what was gonna happen. And I, I think what you shared, if I got you right, you're seeing your greatest number of clients, even though you're marketing, you're doing whatever, through word of mouth. Yes. People who've been touched here, who have tasted and seen, mm -hmm. who've tasted the culture of life, who've smelled the culture of life yes. versus Planned Parenthood right. and the culture of death. There's a lot of pain 
like we said, we see these girls and, and there's, not, there's more women working there than guys, but I've gotten to counsel, I've gotten to be with them, and as a man, just listening to their stories, and all I can say is, you know, women are being savaged right. by this culture our, of death, our children and when are they're dying. being loved right. and respected, yes. Uh, they come away, and once they taste the kingdom, whether you say the kingdom or not, even using religious language, they they know their own dignity and worth, and yes. want to tell other people there's good news here. Yes, it, you know, I think that the, the if I part with no other knowledge, our children are dying. Mm -hmm. They are not dying from a crisis pregnancy and giving birth. They are dying because of the the mm -hmm. uh, of STDs and HPV, especially right. um, cervical well. cancer and. Uh, all, all kinds of cancer. Right. I won't right. go into. Um, they, they have been, they've embraced this hookup mentality, mm -hmm. and they've been told there's no consequences, and they're living with the consequences. We get young, 12, 13, 14 year old girls come in, having all kinds of sex, <sighs> and they're broken and crying, and they need help, and they want help. But they're talking to a medical professional, and so they understand that what they're telling them is true, and they right. realize we don't have an agenda except that we care for them and we love them. Bottom line is, youth of today are not any different than we were young in youth. They still want to be loved. In fact, that's why they've gone down the slippery slope, because mm -hmm. they have this false sense of where they can find love. And if they come into our clinics, I don't have to pull out the Bible right. and, and quote scripture to them. I just have to love them where they're mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. and walk them through it. And another thing is to a large percentage of our young women now and their young teens mm -hmm. have already had an abortion. And they have become the highest level of those that will have a second abortion. And so we also give them a little booklet called Abortion Changes You, which is beautifully written. Mm -hmm. And they can take it home and go through the process of healing if they've had an abortion. Yeah. If they haven't had an abortion in their own bedroom, they can go online, go through the process, use the workbook, and it educates them on, boy, if all this is happening to women mm -hmm. that have had an abortion, right. What am I doing? So it's our post-abortion and our Beautiful. abortion education yeah. program. And, and the Lord not only wants oh. to heal yes. you, and, and so if you're out there, you can, you can give us a call. He not only wants to heal you, but he wants you, like Kathleen, to be one of the most eloquent spokespersons yes. on behalf of life. And so you need to know the forgiveness, the mercy of God, and that he wants to use your life and, and even your story and your loss to somehow, some way, lead others to him. Joy, we have callers? Okay, we have Heidi from Oregon. Heidi, your question or your comment? Um, we were wondering if you could um, explain what this hookup mentality is that Pan Planned Parenting is putting out there. We don't know what it means. Uh, well, hookup means sex. And so, for example, in California, Planned Parenthood has a contract with the school districts so when the young kids in junior high and high school come to school, they, um, they get a phone number on the first day of school and they put it in their phone. Mm. And then they hit send and they're connected to Planned Parenthoods. It's called teensource.org, but it's Planned Parenthood. Mm. And hookup means it educates them on how to hook up that weekend. And if they forget to wear a condom, um, you know, go out and do whatever feels good sexually, any type of sex, they promote every type of sex. And I mean every type of sex. And they promote it openly on this hookup this weekend. Right. So hookup means go out and have sex um, and, and there's no consequences. And if you forget to wear a condom or protect yourself, then no problem, put your zip code in here and we'll send you the closest Planned Parenthood. So it is being promoted in Hollywood. It's being promoted in social media. It's been promoted by Planned Parenthood all over the country. It's been promoted by this secular world. And so we as the church, this is the greatest evil we're facing right now. The greatest is the hookup mentality that is being spoon fed to our youth. And because they don't feel loved and they're right. confused and they don't have support, um, they are buying into it. Right, and I, I mean, I've had clients who come in and say, you know, here they are, they're pregnant, and I'll say, well, how long you've been dating him? <laughs> and they'll go, Mr. Not I'm not dating. dating him, we're just talking. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, 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 we're talking. And I was like, no, we're, okay, so maybe you were talking, but at some point you chose to get intimate and yes. you procreated a child. Nah, he's, I'm not dating him. He's, I wouldn't consider him my boyfriend. No, we're just hooking up. Well, yeah, it's, this just happened. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the baby has to pay the price because I can't be pregnant, you know? And, and so we get to, I mean, it, that is an insane conversation. Mm -hmm. But this girl has so lost her way from the culture of death. 
um, where we get to restore the essence of our own humanity back to her yes. to say, you were made for more. You need to be loved, honored, adored, and cherished. This incident wasn't that. And they want that. Right. They want that. It's just that nobody is telling them that. Right. And then to come into a medical clinic and look around and see medical staff and doctors and nurses in scrubs, to sit down and say to them, this is where you're going to be. If you start this at 12 and 13 and mm -hmm. 14, which we're seeing in epidemic levels, by the time you're 18 years old, you'll have cervical cancer, cancer and other forms of cancer. By the time you're in your 20s, your chances of bearing children and having a family will be decreased. In fact, that's why I say our youth are dying. Our youth upstream program is not just saying in the pro-life movement, we, we, we look at the womb, but we pick our heads up and we have to face the reality of what our youth is dealing with today. And ultimately, by changing them and moving them away from that slippery slope and heading to an abortion, we're starting to have a cause and effect at a much early age. So we're decreasing abortion without even having the number of a saved baby because we know we've changed her life or his life because we also see many, many men in there so we can do the same type of counseling. So it's a program in our clinics that not only, of course, the pregnant women in crisis is our number one and will always take the first appointment, but we see many, many young people that we are, that have embraced this hookup mentality and that we're moving them over to the understanding of how beautifully they're made. And we don't have to say God, right. they get it. Right. From a, a, a doctor or a nurse, so they, there's much more credibility in that. And then listen to why they're doing it and yeah. then they share their heart. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you know, I had an abortion and my son Toby is a part of my life for 36 years and part of my, th I have three sons. And um, I look at where I was. I was that person yeah. and so I have such a heart and I'm also a businesswoman. I ran my own company for many years and so I brought that business model over and realized if I'm going to compete for the lives of these children mm -hmm. and the babies that they will conceive and hopefully not in crisis, that we had to have a model that could compete with them and that's what we've developed. Right. And we continue to grow every day. We change. Every time they change, we change. Mm -hmm. And you have to, because yes. you, you want to be excellent. Yes. You want to just go. You, you, it's a great ministry that you want to present to the Lord to say, we're on the front lines mm -hmm. and we're doing everything we can. And we want to be hitting on all cylinders so that we can make a difference in yes. this culture of death. How many centers do you have? We have six and we have okay. 23 more in California that are coming under our brand. We're rebranding under a new name and we'll, okay. we won't talk about this today. If people mm -hmm. want to find out, they can watch what we're doing. And we're actually raising up a brand. See, Planned Parenthood is one name, one brand. And we're divided. So to bring this uh, pregnancy centers up into the medical model and assist them and help them, that's what we're doing. And branding them so that when a young girl is in Northern California or Southern California or Colorado and eventually taking this across the country, like if she goes to a, she comes here and she parties and she goes to Planned Parenthood and then she can go to Planned Parenthood back there. Well, we want her to go to faith-based pro-life clinics. And we want to, her to know that there's a clinic model out there that is in different, you know, across the country that can compete at a much bigger level. It's, you know, United, we will be so much more powerful, united in God, and everybody will remain their, their you know, hyper-local surgency model of pregnancy care in their communities, but we want them to expand that care right. because they can and to serve many more. We have over 350,000 hits on our websites. I mean, we're educating them so, through social media and we also have our educational programs where our dad's project, where young fathers can come and be mentored and beginnings, parenting. So it's a combination of healthcare, and education and support and the church. And we can't leave out the church because without the church, we could not do this. I think we have a, another caller. Okay, Rafaela from Florida. Your question or your comment for Kathleen. Yes, thank you, first of all, for spending the time and putting all the hours into this work. Uh, we, need a, we need people like you, and I appreciate it very much. Um, however, I got, I got uh, sort of upset in the beginning because my husband started um, making a comments which have no right to do because he, your encouragement to girls and everything is 
just where it ought to be. And he says, oh, parenting, parenthood, oh, she's from there, oh, she's there, she's for abortion. So if you kindly add a little introduction that it is not <laughs> to abort in the beginning. So he, he just was reading that and, and went on it. So can you believe what I have at home? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Cla you. Clarification. Mm -hmm. So we are. You've never been asked to clarify this before. <laughs> <And> <laughs> we are 100. No, we're a thousand percent pro-life. We uh, and we are a thousand percent behind um, abstinence only. We are not abstinence based. We are abstinence only. I. The amazing thing is, I had an abortion, but I never contracepted, and I used NFP. Um, and into my marriage, and I was married 25 years till my husband passed away, and now I'm married to my beautiful husband, Frank. But um, we are pro-life. I am, and any bishop will tell you, I speak all over the country. I'm in Florida a lot, and I am uh, an outspoken advocate for the life issue everywhere I go. I go into the secular world, and I go into the, the Christian and Catholic world, and I am to the core of my being, and our clinics are pro-life. When we reach out to our youth, if I walk out to them and say, this is a pro-life clinic, come in here, um, they won't come. So maybe he felt because birth choice that we're offering choice. Well, God gave us a free will. And I don't believe we can't take away that. God gave us a free will and we make our choices. What we do in our clinics and why we say birth choice is that we want to make sure that the choice for life is back on the table. And so we give them all the information to empower them to make the choice for life. Now, I said 81% choose life, and the remainder, 19%, is that right, mm. um, choose abortion. But I can tell you, we do not judge them. We love them. We have post-abortion counseling, and they come back and said, I wish I had listened to you. Right. So um, I'm sorry he thought that, and I'm glad mm -hmm. you called and that we could clarify that we are... Yeah, I, it, I yeah. lost my son from abortion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I walked out of that abortion clinic as a Catholic that had walked away from her faith and came back to my faith. Mm. And I've dedicated my life yes. um, yeah. to making sure that women and now young men have the option for life yeah. right there and that we give them everything they need, medical care, education, support, and love so that they can carry the baby to term. Yeah. Yeah. That is my ministry. Mm -hmm. And even though it's a business, it, has a, it is driven by ministry. It's a pro-life ministry, and it's, of course, with the Catholic Church backing us yeah. and many evangelical churches. Um, it's also very rooted in the, in the gospel and, and our faith. Thank our you for faith. that credible witness, mm -hmm. because you're speaking to maybe thousands. We know hundreds of thousands, mm -hmm. maybe millions of Catholics, of evangelicals, of Pentecost, all different stripes and backgrounds. At our center, we have probably 70 to 80 percent all claim to be Christians, and, and they may very well be, but these are our people. Yes. These are our, son, uh, our daughters and sons, and, and so we want you to hear that out there, that, that centers like Kathleen's, health centers like Kathleen's, and the work that we're doing. We want to bring healing and forgiveness. We love the women if they're in a crisis pregnancy, um, whether they've had an abortion, and it really is a culture of life that's there. So you have hope today. If you're out there, you were directly involved as a woman, as a guy, grandma, grandpa, there's hope and healing for you. Joy? Okay, we're gonna go to Teresa, who's calling us from New Hampshire. Teresa, your question or your comment for Kathleen? Hi, Kathleen. Um, I'd like to first thank you for what you're doing. I think it's incredibly awesome. Um, I am a registered nurse and I no longer work, but this, this is what my comment was. I, I think what you're doing is awesome, but I, I'm upset with I don't understand how our country, our nation, is still able to push abortion as uh, you just said, up to nine months a 12-year-old can abort a child. We already know that that it, at conception, Every scientist on the face of this earth knows that that is a unique 
human being with a unique genome, a, a unique DNA patent. It has the right to life, liberty, freedom, the, you know, all of those things that the Constitution provides. And I don't understand how we're still able to say, well, we're not really sure when life begins, or this, this wishy-washy, I mean, we know, yes. and they know. Teresa, I ask myself that so often, and, and if I go down that road, I get a little discouraged. And of course, Jim said something that I think I've neglected to say, and that is hope. God doesn't ask us to, he hasn't asked me and Bert Choice and you to conquer the world or change the world. All he asks us to do is offer hope and love and try. Planned Parenthood has redefined the beginning of life to be at implantation. They are teaching it in our schools. The government, the current government that is, and for quite a bit of a while now has embraced Planned Parenthood in that, in that and they've just allowed them to act like they're scientists and say, well, really, you know, life begins at implantation, right. which gives them that, that's where they fight the, um, the plan B in the morning after pill. Well, you know, the, 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 the egg hasn't implanted, therefore it's not a life. We know it's a life. Every scientist, as you said, out there say life begins at conception. We have to teach that. I think the important thing I can say is that's the exact yeah. issue. We need to unite and teach truth. Oftentimes, I feel, as I know you do in your clinics, that we're all alone out there. And so my challenge is to all of you, where are you? And um, we're presenting this model and we can't do it. This is not something I'm doing. This is not my ministry, this is God's. And um, so you feel that, get involved, do what you can, pray, like you say, 40 days for life. But get involved and do something because this isn't my ministry. This is God's ministry and we must stand firm. I believe strongly when we meet our Lord, 65 million babies and counting and God's gonna say, what did you do? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. hopefully when you tell him, he'll say, well done, true and faithful servant. Right. I think that's a perfect point to mm -hmm. conclude yes. our time. A tremendous witness and we thank you so much for your thank ministry, you. Kathleen. Thank You're you. welcome. Hope that everybody goes thank to, you your, for having me. to your site. It's been our privilege. Thank you so very, very much. Keep up your great work. You You've too. Us. God bless you. you both. Thank you. Let's go to Joan Lewis. She has an update for us from Rome. So let's take a look at what she has. Hi, Jim and Joy. Lots of news this week from the Vatican about marriage and the family. Marriage, of course, because Pope Francis on Sunday married 20 couples inside St. Peter's Basilica. And we talked about the family because Tuesday there was a press conference, a briefing in the Vatican with Archbishop Chaput of Philadelphia as he talked about the 2015 World Meeting of Families that will take place in Philadelphia. Now, in his homily Sunday, Pope Francis told the newlyweds, he talked about marriage and the family, of course. And he said, families are the first place in which we are formed as persons. And at the same time, families are the bricks of the building up of society. And he also had some advice for newlyweds. He said, make sure Christ is always in your life. Make sure you frequent the sacraments. And make sure when you go to bed at night, you go to bed on a good note make sure there's nothing between you as spouses. So go to bed happy. And then we come to the meeting on Tuesday, families again, the focus. I talked to Archbishop Chaput after the press conference, and he told me that it was a moment of grace when Pope Benedict named Philadelphia as the city for the 2015 meeting. And he said the theme, of course, is uh, for the meeting in 2015, love is our mission the family fully alive. And he said the diocese will be fully alive with this meeting. And he's waiting for official word from Pope Francis. The Pope has told him it is his intention to come to Philly, but no announcement has been made. But Philadelphia is preparing as if Pope Francis will be there. Well, that's it from Rome this week. Back to you, Jim and Joy. Thanks so much, Joan. And when we come back, we'll have Father John Paul and more on the World Meeting of Families. So stay tuned, you're at home with Jim and Joy.
Father John Paul, it is wonderful to have you here with us again. It's we can just sense the again. presence of the I feel so Lord peaceful you. when you yeah. come. Yeah, it's like, oh, Father's in the house. You can just put the rest of the show on Father John Paul. <laughs> just let, let him do that. Father, just share that. a few words with us and some thoughts about whatever you'd like or about the show thus far or what's coming to mind for you. Sure. Uh, Kathleen's witness was so amazing. Um, and it just, it really reminded me of John Paul II's, St. John Paul II's words uh, on the Gospel of Life, his encyclical, where he said, um, he said there in there, he said, uh, a generation would rise up of those that had been hurt by abortion, whether directly or indirectly. And he said that generation will be the greatest and most eloquent voice in our culture um, against the culture of death and for the culture of life. And as the show was going on, I couldn't help but think yeah. those words are coming mm -hmm. off the page. Yes. That's, this is the gospel life. This is the, this is the new evangelization that we're being called to. This is the gospel life in action. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's, yeah. It was amazing. You know, Kathleen was mentioning hope. Yeah. And I think it's so important for us to have a spirituality that sustains us yes. in the midst of the culture of death, the redefining of, of marriage, what's going on throughout the world, the lack of peace and violence. And what you're sharing is John Paul II, St. John Paul II yeah. said, he saw a day when those who mm -hmm. had suffered the pain of the culture of death, yes. tasting that would rise up and taste the healing of the Lord and that that the culture of life prevails, that we're people of the resurrection. So while well, we got to look at things and there are some cold and hard facts and terrible that's taking place, yeah. yet that can overwhelm you and you, you, you need yeah. that hope yeah. uh, that's real and that Christ is victorious. And that's what I hear you speaking about. Well, she says 6,000 babies uh, have been saved. And I'm sure, I'm sure all, all over the country, all over the world, because of these lights. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to think of these uh, pro-life pregnancy resource centers as uh, lights in the midst of darkness in the world. Many babies have been saved. Yeah. Right. One, one person in this world makes the biggest difference. You know, just look at Mother Angelica, mm -hmm. one, one life. Right. You know, look at her mm -hmm. life, right. mm -hmm. your life, your, mm -hmm. you know, my yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Every, all of our lives make a difference. You know, all yeah. of our lives are so precious yeah. in God's eyes. And Kathleen said at the end, uh, just the question, uh, where are you? That's right. That was the first question that God asked mm -hmm. in the scriptures to That's Adam right. and Eve. Where are you? Adam, where are you? Where are mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're asking, you know, basically Kathleen was asking uh, those women, those men out there, where are you? You're out there. You know, uh, God wants to heal you. Yeah. God wants to use your voice. God right. wants to use your story to heal yeah and that's and bring that's, hope that's part of the demonic trick that that whether it's abortion or whether it's infidelity or whether it's pornography or just other ways that we have violated the lord and entered into mortal sin and then the enemy just wants us to fall into despair right and so many of these women that are coming in are in despair yeah. And, and thank God that there are, are places like birth choice right. um, that they can come in and, and understand their true dignity and have hope. And we want people out there you know, that, that are watching us because when you've got 60 million, mo moving towards 60 million abortions in the United States alone, mm -hmm. um, and it's not just that woman, it's, it's the father of that child, that's it's right. all the siblings and everybody else that's involved. We could just sink into despair. But again, this is the, the good news, the gospel of hope that God can take every evil and turn it to good. He could take the curse and turn it into a blessing. He could take death and turn it into life. He could take a sinful way like Kathleen Eaton Bravo. And now she's like made such great reparation. She's so mm -hmm. eloquent and she's there. It's like St. Augustine and all you know what happened in his life and his right. choices that he made. But you know, God is attracted to sinners. God is attracted to people who need healing. You can actually look at somebody and say, you were directly involved in abortion. I want you to know God's really attracted to you. He's not justifying what you God's did. God's pursuing you. He's right. pursuing. You're just he, the kind of person that he's come for because there's too many of us that are Catholics that don't need any healing. 
You know, it's always them. Well, we don't need to be delivered from anything. Well, yeah. all sin separates yeah. us from God. Right. Yeah. And so that, I mean, the church is, is a hospital full of sinners, mm. full of hurting people. And so we say to all of you out there, come, come into the church and come and get your healing. Come and get your restoration. Run to confession and, and see mm. Father, see your priest, so that he can grant you absolution and, and tell amazing. them it's okay, right? Yes. You heard confessions today. Yes. For a, a lot of confessions uh, today. For a while, I, uh, the last couple of days, I was at a conference. I heard you know, probably four or five hours of confessions the last yes. couple of days. Um, and it's beautiful just to see repentant hearts. Right. And I always remind people that repentance is not something that we can bring about ourselves. It's not something that uh, all of a sudden uh, one day I just woke up and I decided, oh, I'm going to be sorry. Right. No, you know, I always remind people that was the God working within you to bring about sorrow. Yeah. About to bring about contrition. You know, right. God works in us actual actual grace to bring us back into the state of grace. Um, so just the very fact that someone walks in in that, in that confessional, mm -hmm. that is right proof positive yes. that God is working in that person's life. And they're restored more fully to the Lord and back to the family. And God's working through our families. We want to go to a video. Uh, a video inviting Pope Francis from the city of Philadelphia. Pope Francis, please come to Philadelphia. So watch this video and we'll be right back. Pope Francis. The real Papa Francisco. Holy Father, I hope you come to Philadelphia in September of 2015. Were you to grace our city. And to visit with everyone, you'll be able to experience an extraordinary Catholic community, people who really care about their faith. With a great Catholic history. Why wouldn't you come here? This is the greatest city in the world. It's the place where American Catholicism has grown up. The city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. You should come to Philadelphia to experience all of that for yourself. It's not just Catholics who would love to see you in Philadelphia. You'd be welcomed with open arms. And Pope Francis, you'll have a great time in our city. You need to come to Philadelphia. I hope you will come. Please come. Grazie. I love that. That I, was awesome. What a warm invitation. Yeah. Maybe bordering on a little guilt <laughs> if yeah. you don't come. I'm trying to. Please yeah, I mean, it's, come. It's like, we'll give you a Philly cheese. I wonder sandwich. if that gets before him because it's like, oh <laughs> my gosh, right? How can he resist coming? What would it mean for us to have the Holy Father here in America? Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would, it would, would be beautiful. I remember when Pope Benedict was here in 2008, and it was such a, a great gift for the church. I had a friend today who told me that she wrote a letter to the Pope and invited him to come to Birmingham too while he was in the United States and to come to EWTN. And to stay at her house. And to stay at her house. Yeah, she who did. Who was that? <laughs> no, we can't stop. Here in town. I know it, who it, was, it is. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> and she said, I paid a lot of money to send that letter, but you got to ask. He's got to go. But come. you know, strangely enough, Pope Francis is the type of person that would do something he could like, say, like he said, yes. I'm going to stay at this person's yeah. house. I mean, yeah. I'm so, coming to your house to eat like Zacchaeus. Eh? He would call them up and say, yeah, yeah. sure, I'm coming. Thanks for ready? the invite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, I tell you, Father, we started our time speaking about uh, the week of prayer and fasting, which is just so critical. So I want to underline that 40 days for life, prayer, fasting, action, uh, the whole mass or service for reparation regarding the black mass. Sure. And so as we close out this time, we just want to tell you, it's, it's so important. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked way, I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sins and I'll heal your land. Father, well, why don't you close us out with a blessing? Sure. Family, may Almighty God bless you and keep you. May he turn his face to you and be merciful to you. May he show you his kindness and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Father. God bless you. Remember, you're an important part of the family and you're always at home with Jim and Joy. Till the next time, bye.